Good day. Uh, continuing uh, my de development of um, WP Cron Pixie, uh, converting an L map um, to Gleam and Luster. So I, last time, let's get to it. There we are. Uh, and I best bump up the. Uh, that'll do. Um, we have uh, so far. We've updated the make file um, the build. We have um, some changes to the class file so that it can load the uh, new JavaScript being built from Gleam uh, and updated the main.js, which loads that. Um, and then we have a couple of little small changes here and there. Um, the main stuff, of course, is in the source UI which is where the Gleam stuff is. Uh, let's, uh, what we're gonna do here, we should, well, we're gonna, this time, let's see if we've got, we have the main, at the moment, is taking in um, some flags of just an integer. Uh, because at the moment we are just using the example counter app and I need to change that to model. So is that there? So the model at the moment looks like this, but in the L map, we have quite a more complex app. Uh, model. The basics are a bunch of strings, uh, an admin URL, nonce, which is a number once, uh, a timer period, so how um, how often we refresh the front end. Um, the actual cron schedules that we're going to show, um, some examples, events, yes or no, basically, um, and then auto fresh, yes or no. And then a little indicator there to say, hey, we're refreshing at the moment, so you might want to do an animation or whatever. Um, but those strings here contain a bunch of stuff. Um, it's basically a an array um, of localized strings, and that's the keywords for them. And then the schedules that we have a list of up here, they have a name, a display, an interval, and then events, which may or may not exist. Same for the interval. Interval is uh, like an integer number of seconds, I guess. Um, might be minutes. And then we've got more complex stuff going on there we then have the event as a list as the stuff which has a list of args so it gets quite deep we have like events in schedules in uh in the model and stuff like that so we're gonna have to convert all this across to gleam uh, and to do that we'll be creating basically a decoder for the data that's coming from the back end so in the back end, where we have source, we've got all this stuff here. This is where it comes from. Uh, it's a bunch of data, a uh, load of strings. Uh, we have the crons have got, and that's another function obviously so we're gonna have to decode all this which eventually arrives as here I'll just take that out for a second um, basically cron pixie is a variable um, if that's what it does here. Localizes that script. Uh, so it adds to the script handle this 
quantpixie variable with all that data in it. Um, so there you have your strings and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm in the moment, at the moment, the flags have been passed into the L map uh, as a object. So I'm only taking some of them. Hmm. Wonder why. Strings add menu or nonce. Oh dear. Example event sort of fresh. Adding more. Nope. That's all the same stuff. I wonder why I had to do that. It was a long time ago, many years now. Anyway, uh, so we are basically wanting everything from Quampixy. I need to pass it in. Hmm. Right. Let's do let's do some setups and some tests for that. So eventually we'll be just passing in Quampixy here. But first things first, we need to be able to decode all that data into a model. So let's get going on that. In the data, we have this model. Now, presumably, I can do this. I hope. And then strings will be a list. Is that how it works? Yeah, string. Oh, actually, no. We want it. Strings. And then down here. We want strings. Hold on a minute. This could be a lot easier if, uh, if I just convert this lot. Let's take all this, all these types. Uh, Right. So we want I think this might be almost right there. Let's see. Didn't need the equals there. Oh, it's using spaces. Hopefully, I, that will change in a sec when I. Uh,
I'm going to save. Let's join that up. So now it starts to get a little bit tricky. So let's just double check what we've got here. We have, all right, so this should be a list. Oop. List of schedules. Um, and then we need to close off this model. We need to do the same thing here. You can't just have that. I need to have constructor effectively. Like that. And they're all flags. So we're basically creating a record in here. And then the same here, pub type schedule. Again, we're creating a constructor here. And then right now we've got the maybes we need to get rid of, I think. We've got everything else done up here. Got list of schedule. Strings are pretty straightforward. It's just a record basically. Then for the schedule, maybe int. Now that I think is an option. but I don't know what the syntax is for that. I'll have to check. This is very early days for me in Gleam. Uh, so I want to go to Gleam Run. Uh, I'll do just the tutorial. Uh, look at the contents. not results option right so option and then the type and then we get back um some value or none. Okay. Uh, the text just option, yeah. So Option int should hopefully work. Same here. We have option. So we basically we might have some events on the schedule. The schedule can be empty. It might it might have been defined have nothing in it. And then we will in that have a list of event types and then in here I'm doing pub at the time here but I'm not sure whether I need to but we'll tighten that up later oh I probably want to test it so yeah I probably do need to keep it public but that's why I did it in internal okay so here Again, there's a record with a constructor. Um, 
um, and then we have here an option instead of a maybe. Then we have a list. List of string string. So that was a list of tuples. Don't know how that works. Hmm. Let me just quickly do this one down here. What's this type of hairs divider? Okay. All right. So that's for the, remember that now. That's for the date time stuff when I'm trying to reduce down. Like a timestamp, which is like a million seconds since the epoch or whatever it is, um, and I divide it down to how many, like weeks, days, hours, minutes, seconds in the future or past that timestamp is, because that's a timestamp for when the cron event should fire. So, yeah, and I'll probably want something like that. It's basically just a list of um, names and how many seconds. Uh, so we'll do that. Oh. thing I do hope the format is going to do its thing in a minute when I save I'm not going to try this yet it'll just be like magic if it works and if it doesn't well then I just fixed up so the flags right okay why is it hmm I'll have a look at that in a sec one of our can just pass in the model uh, so I suppose it's safer for right. So this okay. There we go. So that looks okay. Unknown type. Oh, because I have to import it. Um, Gleam option. And I might as well do that. I'm only going to use those bits. So type option um, sum and none. Oh, well, we don't have everything from option coming in just yet. So now it says right here yeah, incorrect arity. 
expected one argument got to. Yeah, so this has got to be, I guess, a tuple. Hmm. How do I do a list? How do I do? Well, let's check what a tuple definition is. Hmm. Right, okay. Do I need tuples? What is it I'm doing here? Oh, so yeah, it's definitely just going to be strings, but it's basically a key value. Um, let's check, see what we've got here. If I go to here, oh, it's taken a while. This is the first time it's been brought up since I uh, I've rebooted my machine, so that'd be why. Okay, so there it is. Um, if I have a look, just bump that up a little bit. Quanpixie should be in there. What's it got? So we are looking at an event and it's args. I'm not sure any of them have any, but anyway. So in the data, we have schedules, which are which is an array, zero index, just a sort of indexed array. And then here we have schedules, events, Array, just a list, but we don't know what's in there. Um, this is when I want to actually have it in here so I can see what's what. Twice a day, well, let's do once weekly. Oh, there's not many there. No args. Oh, actually, it could be R. I could have an array. Zero. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Not what I expected. So that has just a value been thrown in. I 
at the moment I don't think I'd do anything with these args anyway. So, oh, you might not be able to see that. It might be by, by my head. Hmm. All right. So it's just an array of values. Don't know what to do with that. I think um, Let's just do a list of string for the moment, because that's what I'm seeing. And then we might need to change that. a map. We'll see. Okay. We will find out eventually. Okay, so flags. Value. Where did that come from? Oh. Part of the D. Hmm. So I wonder if that's just some sort of generic placeholder now. Can't remember. It's a long time. Probably about seven years. I think it was about 2018 that I wrote this. Yeah, six. About six ish, actually. Don't think it was 2017. But anyway, uh, right, so that, I guess. Could have flags It'd just be like JSON and then I decode it into the model. I might not need a flags type. What do I do with 
flags in Elm. Capital one. So that, yeah, in it takes in flags. And then decodes that. Basically just making our record. All right, okay. So that is an Elm thing then. You have to say what, I presume, you have to say what shape your flags are. Whereas in green, I guess you can say what you like. About what type it is. Although this is luster that I'm really thinking about. So let's have a look. Um, can we get away? Let's get rid of that for the moment. And then we can come back and add it if we need it. Okay, so we're now at the point where we, in theory, have the model defined, which is quite complex. Now we need to decode it here. Right, flags is now well, what is it? What's it gonna come in like? Hmm. Probably Jason, eh? Hmm. I kind of need to test that. I need to find out what we get. I could pass it in as a string. I should probably find out what libraries there are. Um, yeah, no, just do it's just the packages. So we'll look for Jason. Uh, Gleam Jason. That seems promising. Work with Jason Ingram. 
Under the hood, library uses Thoas. The fastest most memory for you. Erlang. I'm doing the JavaScript target, not the Erlang target. Um, so decoding. into a dynamic value, which could be decoded using the Gleam dynamic module from the Gleam standard library. So it's taking a string and returning basically a model here. Via a and then potentially an error. So it's doing dynamic decode three. All right, so this is a decoder. So it says it's gonna output cat. I'll be looking for a field name string live. Okay. And it takes in the string and the decoder basically. Okay. Right, that's very similar to the Elm way of doing things. Unsurprisingly, because it's functional and blah blah. Um there's a string. That might be good actually, because when I'm working with, so at the moment I'm thinking about just bring up with that variable, passing it into the app and it starts with all the data it needs. But at some point I'm gonna need a timer and then it's gonna go do an HTTP request to the back end and get basically the same data back. Um, and that will be a string at first, big JSON blob of string. Bit of a mix there. Um, so it, it's always going to start as a string. It's just uh, at the moment in the front end, it's a JSON object already. So I just need to stringify it, I guess. I guess that's where that flags would come in handy because then the the record type because then I can do most of the work up front because a lot of it hmm. Yeah. yeah. The admin URL nonce timer period, example events, auto refresh, they're all basic types. It's only strings um, and the schedules where it starts to get a bit tricky. So a lot of it could be done up front as part of a flag type.
So I could. Could pass him as a to the flags. Record. Can I do that? From JSON? Uh, from JavaScript land? Does it have to be... something else? Hmm. Okay, I think I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's do a little bit of testing. What we'll do... Right, I'm going to do that. I'm going to take this model. And I'm going to define flags type Right, this is wrong, I know, but if I do this, Let's just do string here. I pretend it's a JSON thing. So, flags of type flags, flags of type flags, and then we're going to decode it. Um, okay. No, 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 no. It needs to be more generic before it gets here. Yeah, see, this is the thing, not knowing how... what, what data we're actually getting. Let's start with a JSON string 
and then let's see what happens from there. Yeah, I'll take that out for the moment. So we're going to assume that we're just going to get a blob of JSON. We'll pass that through to the init. And then the init will say, OK, I'm going to create a model by decoding the flags here. And then in the decode flags, we'll just take a string. And then we need to decode it. Uh, so do that. Does it just satisfy it? Nah, it's going to have eight things in there. Oof, that's going to be fun. OK. So let's take that. Um, and what do we define strings as? Or oh, that. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. going to be fun to test because I can't do it in a small piece. I should I probably should have started off with a smaller model. I wonder if I can do that. Can I do that? Can I just uh, comment out these things? Ah, apparently so. We'll see what happens. All right, we'll do this. Uh, fact. We'll do this. because that's always going to be false. Um, on startup. And then, yeah, we'll take all this out. Uh, false, can I just do... True. Okay. So in theory, that might actually compile. It's just going to ignore all this stuff. Let's do a um, little test. I'm in the wrong place. Oh no, I'm in the right place. Okay.
Yes, that's correct. My tests are in a mess at the moment. So Deco flags were passing a zero, but we can't do that anymore. So we'll just do that. And we expect a model which just has a refreshing, isn't it? False. And yeah, we'll just get rid of that for a moment. Refreshing. Re oh of course right okay yeah, yeah, yeah so the ui is now completely done so we have a little problem now and that this is never going to work <laughs> um Just take that out. I'm not doing anything now. Um, do this. It's not going to work. Type of this return value doesn't match the return type annotation of this function. Expected model effect found viral model effect. Huh. What if we do this then? Don't get it. Why I don't understand. Found type function bool. Returning a model an effect. That doesn't make sense. Don't get it. What? Oh, I'm out of time. 
Uh, okay, well, I've got to go anyway. Um, interesting. I don't understand that at all. Where is it getting the function? Well, the anonymous function inside the tuple going to model. Oh, that's why. I just need to attend that. And that needs to die. Okay. We could just do that. Just do ripple. Yay. Okay, good. Lots of things ignored, but we have that test working. Should probably test. Well, no, I know that's working, so that's good. Cool. All right, well, got to go. I uh, didn't realize the time. So uh, until next time, Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.